Hey folks, welcome to a special edition little insert photo justice photo moment here. Yesterday I had answered a question from a viewer asking about how to extract still frames from the 6K photo files that are generated by the Lumix GH5. And they were asking specifically about how to extract on the desktop. We know how to do it in the camera. And actually, we're going to look at that at the end of all this. We'll take a look at it on here just to make sure you're totally familiar with it. But they specifically wanted to do it on the desktop, which makes sense. You're going to shoot on the camera and at some point offload the files and want to deal with them all on your computer. You don't want to have to go back to the camera every time you want to extract a 6K photo. So first of all, why is this even a discussion? Back before we had the GH5, you could take the 4K photo file out of any of the previous Lumix cameras, pop them in your computer, open them in QuickTime, open them in Final Cut, in Lightroom, in Premiere, basically anything, and you could find the frame that you wanted and extract that still frame. Well, the problem is that now with the GH5, it is producing an H.265 file, which is basically next generation MPEG something or other, doesn't matter, anyway, point is, most computers don't support it yet, which is a little bit of a challenge. Now, you might have a computer that supports it, and if you do, awesome. But if you're trying to open the file and you're seeing a message like file not supported or something like that, then the problem is that Mac OS doesn't have this built in. Windows doesn't have it built in. You need to have some other software to read it and or transcode it into something else. And the easiest solution is to transcode it. You just take your MPEG file that's a H.265, convert it to H.264, and you're done. Uh, and from there, you can bring it into a movie file, a uh, movie app, or anything like you used to do uh, the old days. So um, the problem, though, with what I suggested yesterday was that it didn't quite work for full 6K files. So here was the thing. I had recommended an app called Handbrake. Handbrake has been around forever. It's, I guess it's open source. It's one of these things where you can take just about anything and convert it into a, another movie format. And it worked. The problem, what I hadn't realized, is I had only tested it with their built-in presets, which were encoding it out to high-def resolution HD. So not 4K, not 6K, it was just HD. Now, apparently you can, it'll still work to go to 4K. I haven't actually tried it because what really matters is that it doesn't work going to 6K. Let me show you what, it, what should work. And I'm sure this will eventually, well, hopefully it'll eventually get supported. But let me just show you the way it's set up now. So this is Handbrake. I've already imported a file. I've got my H.265 file right here. And if I double click it, it's just going to say, could not be opened, right? Because QuickTime slash Mac OS does not yet support that. So I drag it into Handbrake, and if I choose one of these preview uh, presets, like this Fast 1080p, drag it in, hit Start, and away it goes, and you're going to get a, a file. It's going to be fine, except that it's not full resolution. So then if you look down here, you have a row of tabs, and one of them says Picture, and you click on Picture, and you get your sizes, and it shows the source, 4992 by 3744. So you punch that into here, and you think that's all there is to it, and you hit Encode, and away you go. The problem is that when you do that, you get a bunch of black frames, which is actually really similar to what I was getting out of After Effects, except that it was all green frames. OK, so this clearly isn't working. And from what I've, I've been told, I, I can't verify this is the problem or not, but from what I understand, it might be because this camera is generating 10-bit files, and apps like Handbrake are really only designed to work with 8-bit. OK, so Handbrake is out. Forget about Handbrake. I told you to use Handbrake. Throw that away. We're going to use something else. There is another app that I was pointed to called Rocky Mountains Converter. It's another open source, and it doesn't actually have its own website, so you got to kind of find it to download it. But let me show you how to find it, how to get it running, and let's show you a little trick because it might not run on your system. I know, we're in like uncharted territory here, but just work with me here. OK, let's get rid of Handbrake here. We don't need you anymore. Uh, I'm going to go to Safari. Oh, and good, I had this up. This is another option. So if you are on a PC, this chap out of Sweden, uh, his, uh, his Twitter handle here is Producenterna, or SE, out of Sweden, he did a little video for me, and this is for me, look at that, it's for me, for Photo Joseph, telling me that on Windows, there's another solution called Pot Player. I'm going to link to this right now. So up in the corner, you'll see a link to that. Check this video out. Uh, really nice guy. Great little video that he put together for me. And this is a Windows solution. So check that thing out. All right. But what we want to deal with here is finding Rocky Mountains Converter. So search for that. Google search for Rocky Mountains Converter. And it'll probably be at the right, right at the top. And you'll see it's under sourceforge.net. Don't let that throw you. It's not going to be under a Rocky Mountains website. Go into here and big green download button. You'll go through a little wait, wait, wait for it to download, but it'll download. OK, you're going to get a zip file uncompressed to a folder, which has this, which 
doesn't look like an app. It looks like the inside of an app, but this is it. The app you want is right here, RM Movie Converter. That's the one you want. Now, if you double click on it and it launches like this, you're set and ready to go. However, there's a chance that you'll launch it and it won't work like that. So I don't know why. This is not a Mac OS Sierra issue, it's something else. But I have two computers. I have the 5K iMac and I have this MacBook Pro Retina. They're both about the same age and both are running the same version of Mac OS Sierra. Rocky Mountain Converter launched perfectly fine on the laptop, would not launch on the iMac. It was, it'd bring up some web, I don't know, some other window, it wasn't the app. And so then I was told, here's how you get around that. Mm. Okay, so here's what you gotta do. I'm just gonna open up a text file here to show you what how this works. So here's the instructions on the screen. Here is the workaround to get Rocky Mountain to launch. So you right click on the app itself and you choose show package contents. And then you open the contents folder and open the Mac OS folder. And in there you see this thing called Node WebKit. When you double click that, it's going to launch terminal and then launch your app. That should totally work. If it still doesn't work, if all you get is terminal and you don't get the app itself running, there's one more thing you can do. Notice here, there is still another instruction. If it does not come up, then type this. Export underscore event, whatever, you can see it right there. So just type that in. I will copy and paste these instructions into the description down below, but type that in. Apparently that will launch it. I can't verify that because I haven't had to deal with it quite that far on my iMac, just going into the package and opening it got it to work. Look, I know this sucks, but this is what we have to deal with today until we get proper support in the operating system. So now let's take a look at how to actually do the conversion. All right, so let's get rid of this guy and we don't need, I'm actually gonna quit out of this and so I can quit terminal and just do this properly here. Open up the movie converter file and drag in our movie file. So there's a source file and you can batch them. You can drag in a bunch of ones. It's gonna automatically create an output folder called converted at the same location where you started from. So on my desktop, it's gonna create a folder called converted. And then you have a variety of choices here. So under codec, if you choose H.264, you are going to end up with those same black frames. So don't do that. Instead, go ProRes. Now I know what you're thinking. Are you kidding me? ProRes files are big. I know, but it works. If you convert to ProRes, you'll have a file that you can open into any video editor and extract out the still frames, okay? So you can go you can go high quality ProRes 444. I, I mean, if they're 10-bit files, maybe it makes a difference. I don't really know. Uh, you'd have to play with it, but I'm just gonna go 422. Quality, you can choose between uh, ProRes proxy all the way up to high quality. High quality is like, I think 444, it's insane. Um, I just did in my test LT and it looked great. I haven't done a difference algorithm on it to see, make sure that it really is as good. But see, again, play with this. Uh, you know, give it some, give it some time. Go through it, see what you think is is best. Resolution. Don't forget to change this. We're going to go up to same as source. There's no preset for 6K, so we go same as source. And then frame rate, you'll want to leave it same as source as well. You don't want it adding or deleting frames out of there. Click on process. And it's relatively quick. Uh, this is, actually, I don't know how many seconds this file is, but we're just gonna let that run in the corner there. So again, pain in the butt, but this is what you gotta do. Now, again, you can do all of this on the camera, and I'm even gonna show you how to batch them on the camera. And it's not batch like select 15 and then hit go. You can batch out five seconds worth of content at once. Um, so again, not ideal, but it works. And then you have a, a media card with, with five seconds worth of Frame. So if it was if you're shooting at 30 frames per second, that's between 150 pictures that you can choose from. If you're shooting 4K at 100 at 60 frames per second, then it's gonna be twice as many. Anyway, you get the idea. Okay, that is done. So that has finished that. Let's close that, open up the converted file that was created or folder, and there is my picture. So I can I'll go full screen on here and hit play. And here comes our snowboarder. There he is. Boom, and so now of course I can navigate back frame by frame and I'm just using the keyboard here and I'm just in QuickTime Player, but at this point obviously you could open this into whatever you wanted to get those frames out of there. All right, so that is how you can do this on the computer. Rocky Mountains on the Mac, which is also available on Windows by the way, or that pot app that I mentioned, again, we'll link to it down below um, on Windows, which doesn't have to convert, you just extract the frame, so that's a nice bonus there. 
or of course you can do it in camera. So let's take a look at, oh, and incidentally, so at this point we've got a movie file, we still don't have a frame. So you still do need to bring this into Premiere or Final Cut. Uh, I think the Photos app will allow you to extract a frame. You can't actually do it from Quick, you used to be able to do it from QuickTime. You can't extract a frame from QuickTime Player uh, unless I'm totally missing something. But that's the next step. You gotta bring it into some other app or editor to do that. I haven't tried bringing these into Lightroom. I don't know, Lightroom doesn't do well with video files, so I would imagine it would choke on a ProRes file. Probably don't wanna do that, but you can do it in Photoshop. You can do it in a lot of different apps. So at that point, you're extracting a still frame. Okay, well, let's look at how to do it on the camera itself. So let's see here. I've got the same movie file. I copied it back onto an SD card, which is worth noting, right? Just because you've copied it off of the SD card doesn't mean you can't ever go back to the camera. You can copy that file back onto an SD card pop it into your camera and off you go. Just put it in the same picture folder where other pictures are and, and it'll show up in there. Okay, so I hit play on there. Let me switch over to this camera here. <clears throat> and I'm not doing my normal video out because, well, two reasons. Number one, you can't see this interface on 6K photo. And number two, this way you can see my fingers. Yay, my hand puppets. And anyway, so I hit play. I'm seeing the 6K file. If, if I navigate with the wheel. I'm going to go back and forth between the pictures, but this is the picture. I know it's 6K because it says right there, see 6K. So I'm going to tap that and it thinks about it for a moment and then it brings up the frame editor. Doo -doo -doo, here we go. All right, notice across the top you have a scrub bar. This is kind of a, a big scrub bar. So I'm going to try and do this without, there we go. I'm going to just grab that and scrub and it's a very fast scrub, right? So from here you get basically where you want to go. And then the frames at the bottom draw. And now I can go through frame by frame through here to pick the frame that I want. Now, a couple things in here. There's this peak button that shows focus peaking. And you can see now the little yellow, orangish lines or peaks that have shown up there. So that shows me that, that the dude there is actually in focus. OK, so that's good, right? We want that. Uh, so we're going to turn that off so we're not looking at him. And peak high, peak low, and peak off. There we go. And if I'm ready to extract the frame, I can tap this button right there. So just above my finger, I can tap that, or I can push the menu set button on the back of the camera, just the same thing. So I tap that, and it says save this image, and we say yes, and it says processing with noise reduction, and away we go. Now, a couple of things you can do in here. This is kind of neat. So let's uh, let's say I, I like this picture, but I'm not ready to extract it yet. I'm gonna, I am want to want to kind of bookmark this. You have this little pin up there that adds a bookmark of sorts. And then I can scrub through and I go, okay, I kind of like that frame as well. So let's bookmark that one and let's go to a totally different page on here. Let's go, or, well, not earlier, if that doesn't make sense. Let's go later, 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 later. There we go, we'll say right about there and let that draw. And again, of course, I can go frame by frame and I go, oh, I like that frame a lot. So I'm gonna bookmark that one. You can kind of sort of maybe, it's kind of hard to see through the camera lens here, but there are little faint lines denoting the markers on there, the, the pins or the bookmarks. This button up here says FN2, I, so I can tap that or I can hit FN2 on the back of the camera. I tap that and now it goes into a bookmark browsing mode. And now using the scroll wheel on the back of the camera, I'm just gonna push left, left, and it's jumping to those bookmarks. So I can kind of mark a few and then go back and check them without actually having to extract them. So that's, that's one way to do it. Now the other way to do this is to go back to the main menu, go to the play menu, and then on page two of three, you'll see this one called 6K 4K Photo Bulk Saving. So you hit that and it brings up your play. And so now I, just like before, I navigate through, find the, the 6K photo that I want. So here's the one that I want. You see it says bulk saving up there. I hit set and it tells you I can crop five seconds of the region and save it as a photo. It really means save it as a bunch of photos, but that's what it says. So this comes up, wait for that to finish. And then just like before, you can do your rough navigation. Uh, you can do a more finite navigation if you want to but I'm gonna say from there, as soon as he comes into frame, I wanna save. So now I tap that button there, or again, I tap the menu button on the back and it says, do you wanna start bulk saving? Hit yes, and off it goes, and it's going to create all of those files for you. So a couple different ways to go about it. You can do it frame by frame in the camera. You can do a bulk five seconds at a time in the camera, or bring it in your computer if you're on a PC, you've got some solutions on Mac, you've got other ones, you can convert the files, possibly just extract a single still frame. But either way, if you use this solution, instead of Handbrake that I recommended yesterday, so don't use Handbrake, you can get the full 6K resolution. I hope that helps. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.